Hey YouTube, this is MacZ2021 coming at you with a manga tag video. Uh, I was originally planning on doing a manga collection video first, but I kind of figured it would be a little better to do the manga tag video before that or something. I don't know. Um, anyways, let's get down to it. Okay, so the first question is, what was the first volume of manga you ever owned? Um, there's a few answers I could give for that. If we're going by the first thing I actually owned, and not the, the first thing I got when I started collecting, then it would be the original print version of Super Mario Adventures. And I think I got it when I was, like, five. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened to my old copy of it, but um, I knew that, I mean, I know that for the longest time it was out of print and really expensive. And... No, I'll, I'll show some of the pages. And, like, if you wanted to get a copy, it would cost, like, well over $100. Like, you couldn't find it anywhere for relatively cheap. But, anyways, Viz ended up announcing earlier this year that they were, um, reprinting this and i was really stoked that i was finally able to get my hands on a copy again since it was just so expensive and stuff but uh, yeah that's the first comic I owned, but if we're going by comics that I owned when I started collecting manga, which was back in 2008, then it would be either, um, I forget which one I got first, but it would either be the, oh crap, I got it backwards, the, um, Kingdom Hearts 1 manga, or the first volume of El Chino. Oh, I didn't even notice that I there before. But, um, yeah, it was, it was either this one or, or these ones that I got first when I started collecting. Okay, the next question is, what is your favorite volume of manga in your collection? And that would have to be volume 40 of One Piece, simply because that's the volume where Luffy uses Gear 2nd for the first time, and that was one of my favorite moments uh, pre-time skip. But, um... I mean, there were a uh, few other ones I could have picked, but I, I, I just couldn't pass up on this one. Okay, next is, what is your most expensive manga in your collection? Now, if we're going by box sets, the Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind box set, that was, um, wait, where's the, uh, there's the price. It's $60, but I managed to get it for $35 on Amazon. And um, if we're not counting box sets, then uh, the next most expensive thing I own would be the Azamanga Dio Omnibus and both of the Chobits Omnibus volumes. And those are 25 each. 
or well, I mean, twenty four ninety nine. But I mean, still, it's about twenty five dollars. Okay, let me move these out of the way. Next is, uh, is there any manga in your collection that you regret buying? Okay, there's two things for this. Okay, well, I mean, technically two, <laughs> but the, I mean, this three-in-one volume of Kakashi, not because I don't like the series, I do, but the paper quality is just not good in comparison to, say, a regular volume of manga. And I mean, it's just this specific uh, three-in-one omnibus volumes that I don't like. The other thing, I mean, the other one I have that I could count would be these two One Piece 3 in ones But the only difference is, is these were given to me as a, a Christmas present back in 2010. So I'm not going to knock them because they were presents. Otherwise, I would have already, I mean, I would have already had the individual volumes, but uh, I'll, I'll get them at some point and replace these ones. The next question is, what manga in your collection are you most proud of? And that would be my One Piece collection. Which I've put a lot of time into. I mean, there's other series I've gotten since uh, since I started collecting seriously that I've been getting since 2010. But, I mean, since it's my favorite series, I have the most pride when it comes to this one. Uh, so far I have up to volume 65. Uh, other than my One Piece collection, the, uh, I guess the other thing I'm most proud of are these Ursae Yatsura comic books. Which, um, Viz still hasn't re-released it yet, like most of, uh, Rumiko Takahashi's other series. But they put this one out back when they were doing the whole monthly thing where they would release a manga in a comic book format, doing, like, two chapters an issue. And... Uh, I'd have to say this is the rarest stuff that I own in my collection, I guess. But, um, I mean, like, as far as, um, anything that's out of print goes. Anyways, the next question is, how do you organize your manga collection? Okay, so I already showed my One Piece collection. I have it on its own separate shelf. And, uh, I also have all the One Piece games I own with it. Uh, whenever I get around to buying the DVDs for the anime, I'll put them on this, uh, shelf thing. But, um, other than my One Piece shelf, I have three bookcases... This one is my active buy shelf. Pretty much anything that I have on this bookcase, I focus on first compared to everything else that I have. And um, I usually try to buy stuff for these series before other ones. But, um... I mean, some of these I'm caught up with as far as uh, 
new releases go. Um, anyways, the next bookcase is the one I like to call the finish whenever bookcase or the whatever bookcase. Because everything on this shelf I usually get whenever I can get my hands on the volumes. And, uh, wait, that doesn't go there. And, well, yeah, I mean, most of the stuff on this bookcase I get used. I mean, sometimes I'll buy stuff new, but I, I just focus on anything on this bookcase whenever I feel like it or whenever I get around. To picking up more volumes. Because there's like a lot of volume 1's. Volume 2's. And I. I just have a bad habit of not. Focusing on. One series at a time. Or one or two. Uh, and then lastly is. My completed bookcase. I mean, some of the stuff is missing because I took it off for this video, so I could just show it easier. But, uh, everything on this bookcase, I, as far as I'm aware, I'm fully caught up with, I mean, I have all the volumes for that are out in English, uh, I mean, like, the, the Japanese volumes I have... I usually buy those in bulk or I buy whole series at a time so that way I don't have to worry about importing stuff more than once but um <laughs> shit I forgot what I was going to say yeah that's my third bookcase Uh, anyways, going back to the questions, the next one is, what, I mean, what is one out-of-print model you wish you had in your collection? Um, I'd have to say the Master Edition volumes of Fist of the North Star, mostly because they're hard to come by, and they're in full color, which is pretty neat. As far as I'm aware, there's only nine of those volumes that got released in English. I don't know if there was more than nine in Japan, but, uh... Yeah, I'd have to pick that, but if I were going by stuff that I already own, I would pick either... Eat Man, which we only got two volumes of <coughs> back in the 90s, I think. I mean, I know this uh, came out back when manga was still getting <coughs> published in the flipped format to make it more westernized or something. And other than that... Um, I'd had to go with either Cromartie High School, which ADV was publishing, but we only got, I think, up to volume 12, and there's like, I know there's more than 12 volumes, but I forget the exact number. I want to say 19, but I might be wrong, but, um... Besides those two, the only other one I would want that's out of print is Kanagi. And the reason that's out of print is because Bandai published it and we only got three volumes. And, and then they quit the, uh, the uh, market over here. So we never got any more volumes. But that's all the... Um... 
that's all the out of print manga that I want. I mean, as far as what I do own goes. Okay, the next question is what is one manga which you wish was translated into your native ang la native language? Oh man, I got a whole list. Okay, well, I, I won't read them all. I'll, I'll just list some of the ones that I want. Um, I'd like to have Madaka Box in English, Minamike, uh, Congo Bancho, Bimbo Gami Ga, Squid Girl, uh, Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko, um, I definitely would like for someone to publish, well not really publish, uh, put out uh, physical volumes for Danyatsu, because the only way you can legally read that in English is through Crunchyroll's manga app, and they haven't put out the last several chapters because it's, it's about to end as far as the uh, the, um, scans that they have, or the chapters they have, and it just stops because either they didn't finish translating it, or it didn't end, but, um, yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm never gonna know how it ends, unless, um, they finish putting up the chapters uh, let's see. I'd also like uh, Majin Tante no Gami Nero. That's the first series by Yusei Matsui, the creator of Assassination Classroom. That's uh, definitely underrated series. I never really hear anyone talk about it. Um... The only other ones I have listed on, on this uh, piece of paper I got is Needless. That was a crazy read. But there there is uh, like maybe one or two reasons why it most likely will never get an English release. And... Um, I'd also like Beelzebub to get an English release. I mean, I'm pretty sure I know why they haven't released that in English yet, but, um... Uh, all, all I can do is just wait and hope that Viz gets it in English release. And, uh... Yeah, that, that's it for the list. Well, I mean, there's a few other things, but I don't want this uh, video to drag on for too long. Um, the next question is, omnibus or single volumes? Honestly, for me, it really depends on the volume. Like, as long as it's not the 3-in-1 the omnibuses that Viz puts out, like these ones, I'm fine. But, um, yeah, it just really depends on the release, because I know some aren't as good as others, but, uh, uh yeah, it, it just honestly depends as far as, uh, what I like goes. Uh, the next question is, what is one underrated slash unknown manga you would recommend to others? Definitely Danyatsu, simply because it's unique in that there's never been anything like it before. Because, I mean, how often do you hear people talk about, um... Donut cats in a post-apocalyptic Japan. Here, let me uh, let me show you. I have a Danyatsu-related figure of one of the characters. 
and that's uh that's Donyatsu. And like I said before, you can legally read the you can legally read the chapters for it. Um on Crunchyroll's manga app. And that's literally the only way to read it. Because uh, whoever was translating it before, they they got up through, like, volume four, and then they just stopped because Crunchyroll licensed it in English, and they didn't want to get a, a copyright strike, so they just stopped translating it. And if you wanted to read anything after volume four, you'd have to go through Crunchyroll's manga app. But, uh, I'll stop that. But, um, anyways, yeah, I definitely recommend Danyatsu to a lot of people. And the last question is, who do you tag? Uh, it's not really anyone I can tag. I mean, not that I don't know anyone, but I'm just not super close or I don't really, I mean, I haven't really talked to anyone in the manga community on YouTube that much. I mean, outside of, like, Twitter and uh, commenting on uh, videos or something. But uh, I, I guess I'll just make it an open tag. Uh, I mean, there, there's, like, two or three people that, Two or three people I would tag, but I'm not sure if they would see this video. And, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. I'm going to end the video here. And if you like the video, like the video. Uh, if you don't like the video, uh, dislike the video. Uh, leave a comment or whatever. And... I'll see you in the next video.